at the church and you'll be nice and dry in the narthex. Time's a charm. Good morning, Good everybody. Mo- there you go. No. We have our rector with us today. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to get your attention. Whoops. It's really loud in there. Anyway, everybody have the bulletin, the service. Unfortunately, it's raining, so we're going to start in here. So the cross, during the procession, the cross will lead and the congregation will go behind the cross. And you'll just go to your place that you want to sit. 
Right. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you, do what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in the name, his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you in the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Congregation, go
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the Old Testament. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he weakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Is Psalm responsively by whole verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Our epistle lesson is from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, even though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
seated. Unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke it open and poured the ointment on his head. But some there who said to one another in anger, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this this ointment could could have been been sold for more than 300 denarii, and and the money money given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you have always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, When the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city, and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed, and said to him one after another, Surely not I, he said to them. It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took the loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to them, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, 
but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them, and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard us blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as a deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. When Peter, while Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are Galilean. But he began to curse, 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 and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, 
the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply. So the Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with them they crucified two bandits, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, the darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Jonas and Salome. 
These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him from Jerusalem. When the evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the death of the, before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he was already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of a rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where the body was laid.
Please stand if you're able and let us say together the Nicene Creed found on page 6. <coughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord comes to us humbly, riding a donkey and proclaiming a message of peace. Let us pray, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians hear and share the word of God as true disciples, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the ends of the earth receive the words of the King of Peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders of church and of state prefer humble service to empty power, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that those who see the cross starkly revealed in their lives draw strength from the name above every other name, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, especially the Rever Reverend Roger Barney on the 40th anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood, and for all our many blessings now named either silently or aloud. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those in any need of healing, especially Sylvia Moore, Carol Wright, Gray Judge, Nate and Carolyn Wilson, and our shut ins, Ed Jacklich, Mary Swallen, Barbara and Alan Purchase, and those now named either silently or aloud. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially those now named either silently or aloud. Ellen. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we who hope to greet Jesus when he comes again be ready and joyful, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our creator, you show your sons and daughters the way to freedom through the gentle obedience of your son, Jesus Christ. Grant our petitions as we seek to follow him. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Greet each other in the name of Christ and try to greet someone you do not know.
Good morning. Greetings to you on this Palm Sunday. We're happy to have you. Special welcome to those who are worshiping with us the first time or visiting. We're so happy to have you. And we also welcome those who are watching online. Good morning to you as well. For those who are here, after the service, we meet in the center, which is just to my right, your left, for um, coffee and refreshments. I hope that you will join us at that point. Uh, the only announcement I have really is to remind you of what's coming ahead. I know you know it's Easter coming next Sunday, but you just heard the whole story in the gospel from before Maundy Thursday through Good Friday. And the reason that is is because the church doesn't expect you to come back until Easter Sunday. As your rector, I want to tell you that's not my expectation. I hope that you will come and experience the Triduum. Maundy Thursday at 7, Good Friday at 12, Holy Saturday and the Easter Vigil at 7 p.m. And then on Sunday morning, we can really celebrate at 8 and 10 o'clock. And when you do those days, I know it's asking a lot, but when you do that, come Easter morning, it really feels like Easter. Really, and it's a joyous day because you've walked with Jesus those days. So I hope that you will give great consideration into joining me and probably most of the folks up here on those days. Uh, then, let's see, Saturday morning, Holy Saturday, the church will be decorated at 9 a.m. And it's such a big space, it takes a lot of people. So if you would like to come at 9 o'clock and help them decorate, that would be wonderful. Speaking of decorations, does the church look beautiful or what? Yes. I think anybody could walk in here and know that it must be Palm Sunday. So... <laughs> Um, at 10.30 next Saturday is the Easter egg hunt, and it is in Crestbrook Field down at the corner of Crestbrook and Saratoga, if you don't know where the field is, the school field. Uh, let's see, what else? That's it, except for birthdays. Oh, that's right. How many people are doing Lent Madness? Oh, gosh. Are y'all kidding me? I guess people don't pay attention to us, Joel. Okay. Well, guess who's one of the finalists? Andrew. Well, don't clap. You didn't vote for him. <laughs> oh, boy. It's like, oh, never mind. So, now's the time to register if we want Andrew to win the whole thing. <laughs> Remakes, reminded me about the Oscars when poor Barbie movie didn't get nominated for the movie, the director, or anything, and everybody's going, oh, that's too bad. And, and the host said, why are you saying it's too bad? You're the ones that didn't vote for them. So, yeah, so that's kind of how I feel about Andrew. So don't clap until you go and vote. All right, birthdays. I know one special one at least. Who's having birthdays this week? We have any little Easter bunnies? Today is my grandson Graham's birthday. He is eight today. And speaking of which, if you're wearing a cross, my granddaughter and I made those. She did two to every one of mine. We have how many birthdays? This is a very special birthday. I want you to tell them who you are and what you are celebrating. I'm Bob Niebenheim, and I'm celebrating my birthday. I'm a fifth of my I'm Ernadine Tilly, and I'm celebrating my 85th birthday. All right. Vicki Simmons, and do I have to? No, you're just celebrating a birthday. You're celebrating, yeah, 39, 39 again. again. Okay, yeah. <laughs> great, all right. Okay, turn into your bulletin on page 7, and let us pray the birthday prayer for these folks. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hands. 
Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. And now it's time for our offering. Please give generously as God is always generous to us. Walk in love as Christ loved and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice unto God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, and by his suffering and death he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we'd fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand if you're able and let us give thanks for communion. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.